While many of the ancient sorceries from before the Cataclysm have been lost, you still have other methods of the arcane within Duskfall. You have being a medium or working with ghosts, necromantic arts to an extent. You have bits of alchemy, you know, just mixing different chemicals together to get an effect, magical or mundane. Then you have bits of engineering mixing into all of this. And then for lastly, you have... Hi, hello, and welcome back to Blades in the Dark, where today we're talking about magic. With all the industrializing, large smokestacks, giant lightning walls, and massive steamships heading out of the port, it's a bit hard to remember that this is still a fantasy setting at its core. It's industrialized and modernized to an extent, even with just electricity in places, but it does still have those bits of the arcane, namely a lot of things being tied back to ancient sorceries. Though a big part of that is that most of that's been lost, hence technology kind of taking up the slack a bit. I mean, a great example of that lost attempted magic or sorcery being replaced by tech is the lightning barriers themselves. That was added after as the magic began to fail. This isn't to say that all those ancient sorceries have been lost, they've just kind of changed or weakened over the years. If you head over to Severos, you still have the ancient fortresses keeping all those different tribes safe within the inlands. Head over to Aruvia, it's famed for all its preservation of that previous knowledge and its exploitation of demons. Or heck, the immortal emperor himself. But for the most part, many different types of disciplines have had to shift or changed, either going with the times in the sense of sparkcraft and alchemy, or leaning a bit further back into what's new. Though when it comes to pure sorcery and just raw magic to an extent, or whatever form that might have taken before the Cataclysm, most of that is lost, forgotten, ancient to an extent, or barely understood. What is roughly known, or at least being explored and used, are the four different disciplines. We have Spectrology, Rituals, Alchemy, and Sparkcraft. Now a lot of these you might have heard of brief bits, especially around Charter Hall from the a Academy video, but actually referencing the Academia again is an important fact that these are actually practiced. Some of them openly accepted even in places like Dusk Bowl Academy, the Spectrology angle at least. So to begin with is the one you're most likely going to be bumping into, interacting with, even if you're not practicing it directly. And by practicing it directly, I'm mainly talking about the Whisper, but all of the different scoundrels can kind of interact with it. The other three here are way more specialized, but when it comes to spectrology or attunement, almost anyone can. So the ghost field, the spiritual energies that now permeate the world or overlap it depending on who you ask. All the ghost, vengeful spirits, and all of their different kinds of undead. This is the subject of spectrology. Currently a bit pseudoscientific, mixture of rituals, religions, or just the academies trying to come in and add permanent facts to them. But important to note, it's still a relatively new thing or suspicious thing, because undead, necromancy, messing with the dead isn't really seen as the best thing. So spectrology itself isn't just the study of ghosts, it's namely the interaction with them. Again, in those pseudoscientific methods, mixing a ritual, but it's namely because anyone can attune to it. That is where the danger and fear come into it, because everyone has a bit of sensitivity to what's going on. Because it really is ever-present, even with the lightning barriers up, there is still a presence of the ghost field across it, and when you leave the barrier and head out into the Deathlands, it's almost entirely folded on top of each other. But specifically stated, every living thing that's still alive, that is, has set some kind of attunement to the ghost field, which is the name Academia gives to it, but you could go with the way cooler angle of calling it the Black Mirror. Or is that one the stars and demons? Said ghost field, Black Mirror, it's where ghosts are. It's almost the ethereal plane, an overlapping of everything that has been dead. Not just ghosts specifically, not just spirits, but also previous memories of those locations, dead locations, previous doors that used to exist. Now gone, but if you know how to interact with it, you can still pass through. Spectrology goes into a lot more than just talking to a spirit, it's not just a medium, nor is it actually just necromancy to an extent, though that's definitely part of it. It's the idea that you can interact with all the past, all that's dead, not just a spirit to an extent, but all those bits of emanations, the psychic backlash on the material realm. I'm not even just bringing up the door thing as an example, that's an actual item you can pick up as a whisper. In fact, there's a lot of fun items you can pick up as a whisper. But with everyone having an attunement to the ghost field and bits of interacting with these spirits, you might be asking, what's the role of the whisper? Well, the whisper is someone who specializes in it, but every playbook still has an option of interacting with it, mostly. And even without picking up those specific talents from that playbook, you can still just make an attunement roll. Anyone can interact with it. It's definitely warded against, or warned against, uh, both actually, and can be very dangerous because you're, again, messing with things that you might not understand, might not have full grasp over, or a really ticked off spirit looking for life essence, or just you. Though heading back to the Whisper and that specialization, anything attunement or spectrology focused is something that can be trained. It's nothing made, there's no chosen or random birth or blessing, or genetic family lines of wizards from some kind of academy. No, it's anything can be trained to do it. Anyone. I'm not- I don't think anything. Anyone can be trained to do it. Actually, I guess if you count vampires and holes as another thing, that would work as anything could do it. 
also those undead. On top of the many kinds of undead, there are some other general terms used in spectrology, which kind of play into everything else going in the haunted city. So, like with the academia, we have a list of different phrases and subjects. And don't worry, it's just for this one. <laughs> Electroplasm, the stuff that powers Sparkcraft, powers those lightning walls, and is taken and refined from Leviathan blood, can also be refined from ghosts. Speaking of which, a ghost itself is a spirit without a body. Keyword there, a spirit without a body. There is actual distinction between a spirit with a body and without, but in general they focus on getting life essence or vengeance. There's another video plan on going way more into the undead specifically, or the different things you can actually play as other than human, because yes, you can actually play as some of these things, but outside of that, they search for life essence and vengeance, and go mad. A hollow, which I got mixed up in the intro to and called a husk, a hollow is someone that's a living body without a spirit, usually very suggestible or dull-witted. Hole is a bit of spark craft with a spirit that has been almost mind-wiped and placed into it. A general automaton of some kind with a mind-wiped ghost powering and functioning in it. They can be many different forms, but in general kind of leans more into the Sparkcraft territory, but still spectrology. Possessed, a living body containing two or more spirits. Possession is not a good time. Not a good time. Now a soul. The normal state of affairs, a soul is something considered a spirit and a body together. When they are separate, they are considered entirely different things from the soul of that person. But yeah, dying with your soul intact and not letting it wander off to become a maddened spirit or your body just an empty husk shambling around the city. Your fresh corpse taken and burned by the spirit wardens, or at, in this case I guess it'd be classified as soul. Spirit well, a rift within the veil that attracts spirits, demons, and otherworldly entities. Generally just a rough power source for the arcane, namely because it's tied into reality falling apart. These can take many different forms and generally kind of different locations. Think of them like a f universal fetter of some kind, something that a lot of spirits attach themselves to. Vampire, a dead body animated by a spirit. And finally under spectrology, Whisper, which also covers some of the other things though. Person who's able to summon and commune with ghosts. So in general, spooky stuff. There's some of the words, the definitions, and the undead themselves, namely because some of them are playable, kind of stretch the topic of them. It's not entirely going to fit just in this brief summary of spectrology. But yes, Morlane Hall, the strange corner whisper, or the young kid that's just always talked to ghosts when they were a kid. That can be a whisper. Rituals, as our next one, are something a bit stranger, leaning more into that ancient sorcery. They take time. And some kind of sacrifice, power source, maybe entreating some kind of demon or otherworldly entity. But in all of them, one of the fun questions tied up into it is the GM has to ask the player, who's doing this ritual performing it, why is it weird? <laughs> Or how is it weird? Because rituals themselves are something you craft. Going into some of the items later on as well, especially when we get to alchemy and spark craft, rituals are something you can find or craft. Not always literally leaving an item, sometimes they do, but most of the time it's actually just produce a one-time effect. Just not something that you can instantly do, not some brief bit of attunement or spectrology, it's something that takes time, sitting down, materials all gathered, chanting or calling out to something else. But an important thing is that they're weird, almost always, and they always have a cost. Notes on rituals and stuff can actually be found, and they kind of vary wildly based on what they're kind of interacting with, what they're sourced around, what the intended effect is. But there's actually two examples given in the book. One example given is Ghost Map, which is making a specific item that allows you to track spirits and even study specific ones, pinning it on the map. So an overlay of the city with different waypoints or trackers, essentially, of the different ghosts in the area or specific details on them. Great if you're hunting one down. That one leads more into the items or general crafting or enchanting something. When it comes to the specific effects, though, the example it gives is fantastic. For that, you have Portal to the Depths, which calls upon some leviathan strength, not metaphorically, literally, summoning a portal a few blocks away that summons everything with inky black water and hideous strength into the abyss somewhere in the Void Sea. A real danger to the caster, I mean, yes, the victims themselves of the portal, but you have to actually interact with some kind of leviathan out in the Void Sea. With a new clock that appears for your character, seduced by the leviathan's song. <laughs> You're cursed! Have fun. Rituals can get real funky, real fast, and it's it's a good time. And before we move on with it, this is where demonology falls into the mix. Not really spectrology, kind of, but that's more specifically with spirits, the undead, different bits of the material and how that interacts with it. When it comes to demons and entreating with them or kind of controlling them, that's ritual. But next up is alchemy, which we begin leaning into the manufacturing, chemical plants, or bits of lead to gold, 
potentially. All the bits of alchemy, maybe trying to make a body mixed of different pieces, the perfect form between a male, a female, the perfect human body. Now, if you can only get the right spirit for that. That, however, is some of the more extreme ends of alchemy. There are the general basics of, I don't know, making a grenade. That falls under it, technically. It's that weird mix where alchemy has also been thrown in with just general chemistry. It's not entirely kept separate. The general actual magical stuff, or what we would call magic, does entreat some things of like, oh, you throw down this vial, no noise for the next few minutes in the area. Some kind of poison, potion, choking gas. It really blurs the line between it's just general chemistry or weird materials in the setting to then, and yeah, this is just magic. But that's part of the fun of it, is it's all based in some kind of material form. This isn't you attuning to anything. This isn't you attempting to try and coax some demon or spirit. It's just mixing things together within the material realm. Or in this ghost field, kind of. You can bottle up ghosts as well, or legally make ectoplasm or electroplasm out of them. Very potent stuff. But your general alchemist, and when it comes to the playbooks, generally leaning more into the leech than whisper, but both could kind of fit both realms of it. But the concocting poisons, potions, fixing, breaking, that's really up leech's alley. But when comparing alchemy into the magic, I mean outside of the specific size where, like almost the silence spell equivalent, you can kind of follow in the same tracks of Vampire the Masquerade and Thin Blood Alchemy of, hey, sure you have some of your own unique stuff, but you could also use it to replicate other effects. On the last of our four, we have Sparkcraft. Now, Sparkcraft itself isn't really its own discipline. It's actually defined by specifically just being any kind of technological study mixed with any of the previous three, including alchemy. Different bits of alchemical processes or just general chemistry mixed with magical components. If it's used some kind of automated distillery, some kind of machine based off of it, fueling from it, you know, things with electroplasm, that's Sparkcraft. Meaning as well, you can make something that's a ritual using Sparkcraft. Or Spectrology, the equivalent of a proton pack, which kind of exists, except it uses an electrified chain, but really doesn't have anything individual to itself outside of being a mix of using electroplasm as a fuel and different other alchemical substances as well, or dispensing it, but tech mixed with magic. The biggest example of it probably being the holes, as its own unique thing that the other three can't quite do. Sure, spectrology-wise, in a whisper, you can just bind the spirit itself, and when it comes to rituals, a similar thing, but probably with a demon instead of a spirit. Alchemy, why, well, you'd have to really think about that one. But when it comes to Sparkcraft, it can essentially just bind it into that physical form. It's not loose, it's not a ritual straining the mind of the individual. It's nice, factory-proof. Kind of. <laughs> Most bits of Sparkcraft have a bit of a quirk or an issue or need that kind of fuel source. Whether it's complex, a bit fragile, a bit breakable, issues with it kind of malfunctioning. But the higher end official stuff is where the spark rites come in and some of the general towers, the ships, those large grand structures and the holes the spirit wardens use specifically. Your sad apocalyptic artificer Harry Potter, that's your spark rite, that's your spark craft. But when it comes to all of these, this namely is a reminder as the city itself is almost ever present with these different things. Cults, ghosts, demons, the world ended a long time ago. As the book itself puts it, and Morlane Hall would also put it, it's not just bits of goofs and laughs with Morlane Hall or just those cultists, but there's an actual value to studying these things. They are the new normal. They are a new thing that is ever present. It's not something distant with a demon behind the veil, the gates of death. They're here. The ghosts are here. There isn't a place you go, your spirit lingers. The body and soul can be broken and anyone with training can manipulate those forces. They are ever-present forces. Do not forget them. Do not just think of general industrializing London. This is a fantasy setting. As I said earlier at the start, there are demons, there are otherworldly forces, possessed leviathans in the ocean whose blood is refined into the, all these things that power the city and to protect it from armies of ghosts outside. Play the crazed lunatic. As a whisper, there's even a talent to shoot lightning by making electroplasm on the fly, essentially. And one of my favorite parts with all of these, the alchemy, what it's cost, the spark craft, or the, especially when it comes to the whisper, spectrology, and rituals, is it's weird somehow. Not just me adding on to it, but specifically called out in the book as a general prompt or question, how is it weird? <laughs> the fact that that, that word is used as a general pretext or descriptor or a requirement for almost everything involving this bit of magic or a suggestion at the very least. That, that gives a tone. That really gives a tone for the arcane, doesn't it? The heavily clash against the industrialization, the status quo, this hierarchy, this, oh, it's a normal city trying to function. There's magic, baby. Use it.
Thank you for watching the video, and I hope it helped inspire you in some sense, or at least remind you of these elements within Duskfall. Because really, this is kind of a continuation of the Academia video, partly just the magic side of everything. Morlane Hall, Charter Hall, the different Hall of Alchemy, Sparkrite Tower, Spectrology being studied in Duskfall University, all of that is always present. But in general, I just fear can be forgotten. It's not really there front and center. It's under the strange forces, but generally just the straight undead take the eye. When really there's different forms this kind of magic can take and everyone can interact with. Anyone can kind of be trained in alchemy, anyone can really be trained in Sparkrite to an extent, or at least give it a shot. Sure, there's characters specialized into it, namely Whisper and Leech come to mind, but everyone can interact with it a little bit. And not just in passing, almost all of them have talents that can specifically interact with like, hey, example cutter-wise, I can punch ghosts now, to quote someone. Thank you for watching again, and a thank you to my patrons. Have a nice day.